Now, this is the directorial debut of Andy Serkis. It was going to be the Jungle Book film that he was making, but because the Disney one was such a smash success, they kind of delayed it a little bit. So this is actually his first film out as a director. Um, Andrew Garfield plays Robin Cavendish. Um, He's actually a fascinating character in history. He contracted polio at age 28 and became paralyzed from the neck down, needing a mechanical respirator to live, which in those days, which was around the mid 20th century, essentially meant you were bedridden for your entire life. But what Cavendish did, which was so incredible, is that he was not only a huge campaigner for disability rights, but he also just fought really hard for the sense of dignity, that everyone has the right to their own dignity and to their freedom. And so he helped to invent a new kind of wheelchair with a mechanical respirator actually built in so that him and others in a similar situation would have a freedom of movement. And so... You can hear them discuss this respirator for the first time here in this clip. Dr Carton, Robin and I, we, uh, we wanted to ask you a question, didn't we, Robin? Can machines like that ventilator only work in hospitals? Well, it's just a machine, you know. You plug it in and it goes. Why do you ask? Robin's going to leave the hospital. Do you have any idea of the risks? Yes. Yes, I do. The risk is that he might die. Robin. I either go on living here... ...or leave here and possibly die. Yes. What are we waiting for? So, as you can hear in that clip, you, there is also Claire Foy, who plays his wife, Diana. And obviously, when they're on the show, and also Andy Serkis spoke about the film when he was on the show for War of the Planet of the Apes, and you can really hear the passion in their voice, that they really believed in this story, and they wanted to tell this beautiful love story about these two people who supported each other through everything, and... That was helped as well by having the involvement of their actual son, Jonathan Cavendish. And so this is a story that really comes from the heart. And I think you can feel that. It's a very big hearted, sweeping and loving film. But I will say, I think this is going to make me unpopular. But I had (gasps) one. I know I just I had one big issue with this film that really kind of troubled me. And it's this idea of the forced neatness and the forced cheerfulness, because at the end of the day, I think Andy Serkis was trying to make one of these British prestige films, which is what I always call them. And, you know, there has to be that element of neatness there. And I think what it ended up is that the film seems to praise Robin Cavendish more for the fact that he was so chipper about everything, less for the fact that he did all this stuff for disability rights, which I, I had issue there. And throughout the film, he's always trying to brush things off and Everyone around him praises him for that and the film seems to praise him for that. And I understand that it was just the attitude of the time. That's how people used to act. But I wish the film would just try and analyse that attitude a little bit because otherwise you do give off the message that you should always pretend to be happy to, to make yourself less of a burden. And I think especially in the context of the disabled community, that's that's not a great message to send out it just I don't know I I know most people won't have had this issue with it but it just was kind of sticking in the back of my brain the entire time just rumbling around <laughs> um and yeah I I understand as well that you know you you don't want the film to be this heavy dark piece of cinema and this happens a lot in films that by doing that you enforce a little bit of the stiff upper lip and It's the same issue I had with the imitation game, with the ending, when you find out what happens to Alan Turing and it's this horrific thing, but everyone just sort of brushes it off and they go, Keira Knightley goes, oh, let's let's do a crossword and it'll be all fine. And that's how the film ends. And I just wish that this kind of cinema would just, I don't know, just interrogate itself a little bit more. And, you know, you don't have to go into a super dark, depressing place, just acknowledge that people do have good days and bad days and that you have the right to feel however your body makes you feel, I guess. 